Hi, I'm Jeremy Wallace here, Microsoft Certified Azure Solutions Architect, Expert, and Senior Cloud Infrastructure Engineer for Safari Micro. Uh, today is my third video in the AZ140 series, Configuring and Operating Microsoft Azure Virtual Desktop. Today we're going to cover the unit personal and pool desktop, so why don't we dive right in. So host pools are a collection of one or more identical virtual machines within an Azure Virtual Desktop environment. Uh, so in AVD, we have what is called AVD Session Hosts, uh, that's a virtual machine um, that's typically running Windows. Windows 11 or Windows 10 end user operating system. Think of these three uh, or terminal servers before that, except these are running uh, that Windows 11 or Windows 10 OS, although it's still possible to utilize a Windows Server OS uh, for more of an RDS feel. Uh, typically, all of the session hosts within a host pool uh, utilize the exact same image. And uh, so uh, all the same updates, all the same applications, all the same configurations that are identical in every way. We typically utilize a, a golden image uh, to achieve that process, and we'll cover that in a different video. Uh, so host pool, everything inside it, session host, that is identical. Um, well, desktop, so uh, they would uh, interact with applications or a full virtual desktop experience on the session host inside these host pools. And we can dive into that a little bit more. Uh, users obtain access to host pools by being allocated to a host pool using an assigned application group. So you can have uh, different application groups um, with, with different user assignments based on, say, job functionality. So say you have a marketing team, a finance team, an HR team, and they can all utilize different virtual desktops that may have different needs, different applications on them. Uh, for instance, if the marketing team needs access to a GPU-enabled uh, virtual machine size to be able to do some uh, some graphics work on it, uh, you can create a host pool that utilizes those GPU-enabled uh, virtual desktop sizes, and then I have the the marketing team assigned to an application group uh, that's associated with that host pool. And to either publish out a virtualized application, say you wanted to virtualize Photoshop for them to be able to interact with, or you can give them that full virtual desktop uh, experience. Uh, so there's two different ways that you can handle um, host pools. Uh, you can either do pooled um, or personal. And so I'll dive into that a little bit. With a pool, you can configure a pooled host pool for several users to sign in uh, and share a VM. Typically, none of those users would be a local administrator on the pooled VM. Uh, with pooled, you can use one of the recommended images that includes Windows 10, uh, now Windows 11, Enterprise Multi-Session. Uh, this operating system is uh, exclusive to Azure Virtual Desktop. Uh, you can also use your own custom image. So what Microsoft is saying there is they have actual custom image designed for Azure Virtual Desktop. It is the Windows 11, Windows 10 uh, enterprise multi-session operating system. This operating system is specifically designed for multiple users to be able to connect to one session host or one AVD server, quote unquote, because it's not running a server operating system. Uh, so in this model, um, all these users um, are sharing the resources of a single session host virtual machine. Uh, and now there's a ton of cost benefits to that. UVD becomes incredibly affordable if you can pile up uh, users onto these uh, these session hosts so that they can maximize their utilization of a single session host. Um, I've talked about in previous videos that typically not everybody's um, most people don't max out their CPU and memory utilization. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of times when there's moments where um, the, the computer is being severely underutilized. And so stacking users on it uh, helps optimize your uh, the efficiency of your usage uh, of those resources. Uh, so it becomes cost effective the more people that you can stack up per host, um, but also they're sharing those resources. So you have to keep that in mind. And so that's when you start playing with scaling and, and creating um, uh, uh, an auto scaling plan that spins up more hosts and then sets the amount limit of how many users can be on each host. Uh, so it can get more complex from there. Um, but this is typically when I uh, talk about AVD with people, uh, I recommend going with a multi-session route um, because of the, the cost benefits that you can associate with that. Um, and there's some complexities to make that work well, and that will be covered in other videos. Uh, but the other uh, method is personal. Now, there are definitely cases uh, where a personal a virtual desktop um, is much more preferable or needed in a situation. For instance, take um, a, a client that I've worked with uh, had a specific um, AutoCAD 
uh, application that the licensing wouldn't support being in a, a shared session model uh, like the multi-session setup of a, of a, a pool AVD environment. So each individual person could only um, be assigned to one specific AVD session host uh, where that application was installed and licensed um, because multiple users couldn't use that application on that same session host. Uh, so in that case, every one of their uh, users that needed uh, to have a virtual desktop with this application had a direct one-to-one -one assignment. That means one person assigned to one session host. Uh, so if I go back up to this graphic here, um, one person assigned to one of these entire virtual machines instead of stacking multiple people up on that virtual machine. Uh, personal desktop solutions, sometimes called persistent desktops, allows users to always connect to the same specific session host. Uh, users can typically modify the desktop experience to meet personal preferences and save files in the desktop environment. Uh, personal desktop solutions let users customize their desktop environment, include user installed applications and saving files from the desktop environment, uh, allow assigning dedicated resources to a specific user, which can be helpful uh, for some manufacturing and development use cases. So uh, that's kind of what I described on that, uh, that second one. But um, it makes a great point about uh, when they're personally assigned to a virtual desktop. So when they're directly assigned uh, to their own session host, you can give them the administrative rights. They can they can install what they want. They can reboot it when necessary. You can't do that in a multi-session scenario because multiple users are using um, that session host in the background. So um, if they install applications, all of a sudden that affects other users, they have access to those applications, or if they're uninstalling applications, it takes away those applications for other users. Um, if they reboot the session host, it reboots it for everybody. Uh, so you can't really give them administrative rights in that scenario. Uh, so if someone needs to be heavily um, customizing their um, their virtual desktop, they need that kind of control to install and uninstall stuff as necessary, uh, customize or reboot it when, whenever uh, they they need to, then a personal uh, desktop pool is, is definitely the way to go that to, to give them that control. Again, some of the downside to, to that is uh, when you have one virtual machine, one session host assigned to one user, they assume all the cost of uh, of that session host. So instead of uh, so instead of spreading out that cost, you're like, oh, this one session host is supporting 10 people, um, so it becomes a lot more cost effective. Well, now you have one session host um, supporting one user. So you're paying the full cost of, of that session host just for one person. Uh, so that, depending on the, the sizes they need, that can be a, a lot more costly for you in the long run to go. But there are different uh, Azure virtual machine sizes to play around with and some that are, are cost effective for a, a personal desktop situation. Uh, I know in the case of GPU uh, enabled virtual desktops, that does get costly. So it's a lot harder to do that. But like the, the situation I described before with the specialized application and the licensing, uh, those were GPU enabled sizes. So it's definitely not um, unheard of uh, for uh, someone to want to pay for um, that specialized uh, session host size specifically for one person. Uh, pool desktop solutions assign users to, to whichever session host is currently available, depending on the load balancing algorithm. Because users don't always return to the same session host each time they connect, they have limited ability to customize the desktop environment and don't usually have administrator uh, access. So that's a little bit about what I was talking about. I, I put a diagram here to kind of show this is a, a pooled virtual desktop situation. So you have these users that are all signed to the same uh, host pool uh, and they're getting connected. And the AVD um, control plan that's assigning them to um, specific session hosts depending on availability and what settings they have uh, for, for load balancing. Uh, so multiple users are getting piled up on this. But the next time they connect, they uh, could get that same person could get connected to a different session host. And we achieve this, um, we give them uh, uniformity with their, their profile by using something called FS logics. Uh, so that allows their profile to essentially get connected dynamically to whatever session host they get connected to. So from their perspective, it's the same same virtual desktop experience, same files that are on their desktop, everything's the same. Um, but to 
to the point that Microsoft is making here is that you can't really give them full control of the session host because they're not guaranteed to even return back to that session host. Their their next session host may be on this one or they may be on this one again and then the next time on the next one. Um, so you can't uh, let each of those session hosts differ in their settings. That's why you kind of have to use a, a golden image to, to make sure um, everything's the exact same on all those situations because they could get connected to any one of them. Uh, multiple users do. Uh, so you can't really give them that granular control that you can with personal desktops. Uh, but there is the cost benefits and a lot of times, you know, in an IT environment um, with end users, you don't want to give them all that control. You want to make sure the virtual desktop meets their purposes and what they want to accomplish. It, um, but they shouldn't really be deviating from that. Um, and if you do have one or two use cases of, of people that do, they can always be assigned to their own separate personal desktop host pool. So sometimes you run into that where most of the users can be in a multi-session uh, virtual desktop environment, and then you have a, a few power users that are personally assigned their own virtual desktop. Uh, that's it for, for this video that covers uh, the, the host pools. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out and do follow me for more videos in this series.